The transfer portal is hopping and popping, and my dog is barking. But uh, a lot of things happening. We're going to talk about all of those things here on Locked on Bama. You are Locked on Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody, and welcome back into the Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me, Jimmy Stein, that's him. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. I'll tell you about Prize Picks here in just a minute. Um, first of all, shout out to the gentleman who stopped me last night at the restaurant called Ocean in Birmingham. My wife was having her uh, Casey Projects dinner or whatever, where she, you know she obviously owns the company, and so she's got four people that work for her and all their – significant others i mean they're pretty young so like boyfriends or financees or whatever fiance i know what it is that just <laughs> uh anywho it's funny um it's funny they were all there and while we were waiting to get our table uh this very nice guy just said hey i know you and i was like you know i and i was like hey you know i, I pretended like i knew him because that's what i do because i can't remember people's names so <laughs> like i was like hey you and um, he was like, no, I listen to your podcast. And I was like, oh, man, thank you so much. You know, he couldn't have been any nicer. I can't remember his name. It started with a J and he is from Peachtree City, I think. So hopefully he's watching this and hopefully he knows that I truly do appreciate it. I know Jimmy does, too. Yeah. And, and we do. Had we a, guess. Now, had somebody introduce himself to me the other day in the in a store. Same thing. So thank you guys for listening. And listen, here's the thing. If you see me somewhere I shouldn't be, you don't just know me. Maybe tell me later you saw me. <laughs> don't, you no don't need know to me. Just, no need to make it awkward. Um, <laughs> anyway, Jimmy, the transfer portal is going cray cray, as the kids like yeah. to say. I mean, it is nuts. And and Jacory Brooks, who will forever be known for his huge catch in the Iron Bowl, I, I appreciate him from the bottom of my heart. At the same time, Jimmy, I think I, I know we've talked off air about it. It's probably for the best because, you know, if if he's spent a lot of this year hurt, um, the only thing I don't know is he going to be around for the the other games or is he just uh, out? Most kids that enter the portal, here's the rules: you can enter the portal and remain on your team and remain practicing and even playing the games. That's up to the school. That's up to the program. I mean, uh, once you enter the portal, your scholarship, your position on the team no longer has to be uh, honored. But there can be an agreement between the two parties. But those happen sort of rarely. So myself, until told otherwise, I'm assuming, uh, and I've been right pretty much every single time that this has happened in Alabama, uh, that, that this means Corey Brooks and Isaiah Hastings uh, will not be with the team. Uh, for for the bowl practices or or with the bowl trip, they're they're moving on and uh, starting to participate in the recruiting process. Because once you're in the portal, you're now basically a recruit, no different than the uh, than the high school kids. You're just free to be recruited. Even that includes even official visits. Oh wow, okay. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, Isaiah Hastings, you spoiled my spoiler. Oh, sorry. Well, okay. yeah. uh, Isaiah Hastings <laughs> also in the portal again. I think they knew. This one doesn't hurt quite as bad. He, he really just hasn't contributed. It hadn't worked out. It's not – doesn't mean he's a bad player. He may go somewhere else and flourish. Yeah. Uh, Jameson, Will, uh, Jameson Williams came over from Ohio State, didn't do much at Ohio State, comes to Alabama, kicks butt. But, I mean, he's just awesome. Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, it could happen. But, uh, frankly, I'm okay with it. And, look, if you bring somebody in from the portal, like, say, some other people who are in there, uh, Walter Nolan, who's in the portal who is fantastic. Uh, any idea about Alabama's thoughts with him or LT Oberton, who is also in the portal, who has a, a somewhat of a family connection to Alabama. I think his dad used to work at Alabama, right? And um, and a lot of people thought that would give Alabama the edge. Uh, I've heard rumblings and rumors that uh, he will be visiting Alabama pretty shortly, uh, very shortly. I don't, I don't know that that's the case, but uh, we'll see. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, in terms of Alabama's interest in kids in the portal at BOL, what we're saying is that uh, Alabama has had some contact with LT Overton from Texas A&M. Uh, Alabama's had contact with Chris Paul, uh, an inside linebacker from Arkansas. That's what we know. But contact is just contact. That does not mean that uh, that they have been offered spots yet, or, or they may not be. I think if Alabama is just considering uh, those players, I'm sure there are others. Uh, there's rumors about Etienne, uh, the running back from Florida and Alabama. Uh, again, what we have not, as of uh, this recording, have been able to confirm that Alabama has interest, although that's very possible. He's certainly a good player. Uh I would just be a little surprised that Alabama would be would be interested in a portal running back. Uh, but this is a good player. Uh, you know, Alabama wasn't interested in portal running backs the year that Jameer Gibbs showed up knocking on the door and they decided ultimately Gibbs was too good to turn away. Uh, and, and thank goodness they did, because we all know how good uh, Gibbs ended up being. I'm not sure Etienne's in his category myself, but he is a good player for sure. Um you know, and in relation to Brooks and Hastings, a couple of things, you know, when kids leave, it's for any number of reasons. And there's like multiple levels of should Alabama fans be upset about it. First of all, there's no reason to be mad at anyone. These kids sim simply want bigger roles. Uh, and, and they weren't getting those roles at Alabama yet. Uh, and, you know, so so they, they left. But I think it's two incredibly different situations. Uh, to my knowledge, uh, and I'll report differently if I hear differently, uh, if it changes, but to my knowledge, I don't think Alabama fought to keep uh, Brooks or Hastings. I mean, in terms of like, uh, you know, all that it would entail to to keep kids. I think it was was more of a, all right, well, good, good luck, best wishes. Uh, Alabama had sort of moved past both kids. But, you know, here's what stinks about Hastings leaving. He was going to be developmental from the start. If y'all remember – when we recruited Isaiah Hastings, he's from Canada and moved to America and just started playing football. This guy's played football very little in his life. Uh, he's just big and fast and athletic, and he had to learn how to play football. What kind of stinks is when somebody like that commits to you? We spent two years training the kid. He's probably going to end up pretty good and someone else will benefit from the two years of development, you know, that, that, that Alabama has given him in terms of the training and the size and, and the coaching, uh, someone else will be the beneficiary of Alabama's efforts in terms of, uh, Hastings, who was always, it was always going to take two or three years or more with him. It always was, we signed up for it and, uh, and he left before the development was complete, uh, with Brooks, you know, to some extent, I think he's been passed up by some younger guys. Like if Brooks had returned, he would not be wide receiver number one next year. I think that's clearly going to be Isaiah Bond. I think guys like Kobe Prentice, Kendrick Law, Malik Benson even have uh, have shown up and have, have sort of taken roles uh, above Brooks, who's fought a shoulder problem the entirety of the fall. But uh, in the end, I don't know that Brooks would have been high enough up the totem pole, and that's probably why he's leaving. Also this – uh, when Ja'Cory Brooks committed to Alabama, we were throwing the ball all over the place. Now we don't. Uh, so I think between throwing it less and having more wide receivers that we want to play, Brooks felt like I'm not going to get enough balls here, and that's why he's leaving. Uh, I don't think it's a situation at all where he was pushed out or where the staff is like, boy, I'm glad he's gone. It's not that at all. Uh, I think Brooks just wants more opportunity, and the staff is like, well, all right, we get it. And I think that's fair. And look, and also, and again, I'm this is I'm trying not to be insulting. He's not Devonte Smith or Henry Ruggs or no. or Jerry Judy. He's a good player. Good He'll player. be good somewhere else. That's fine. Um, and again, I choose to remember him in a very positive. He won the Iron Bowl, uh, at least was a part of that kind of way. So, Jimmy, when we come back, I want to talk some other recruiting stuff. Maybe even still stay in the portal here for just a second, but I definitely want to talk some other uh, high school recruiting. Alabama's gotten some news and some of it's bad and some of it's weird. Um, but Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. We are easily the most exciting way to play uh, daily fantasy sports. 
look, with basketball season here, you can now pick a combo projection across football and basketball from the Specials League, a league created specifically for combo projections that includes two or more players from different sports or leagues. For example, LeBron James plus Travis Kelsey at a 10.5 combo of three-pointers made plus receptions. Want to play alongside some prize picks favorite players like rapper Meek Mill and comedian Andrew Schultz? You can do that. You can now find those on the Community Plays under the Promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in the prize picks community prize picks even offers a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured that's amazing go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars go to prizepicks.com and use code locked on college for a per- first deposit match up to one hundred dollars prize picks is where you want to be um Okay, so some recruiting-wise, uh, I mean, I guess we can stay in the portal for a second. I'll tell you a guy that I'm just fascinated by is Evan Stewart. And, I mean, I think we've talked about it on previous pods, so no need to really get into it, I guess. But, man, I hope Alabama's involved there because I like him a lot. I do. I like him a lot. I have no idea what's going to happen, but some late rumors, just rumors, because we don't know yet because anything could happen. But late rumors, Evan Stewart staying at A&M. But we'll, we'll see, I'm sure uh, – I'm sure, as 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 we know, it's perfectly legal in this day and age. Negotiations continue. Negotiations continue. Um, mm-hmm. Meanwhile, you're talking about boy, the mass exodus from Florida and Vanderbilt and A and M. I mean, as, uh, even if Evan Stewart stays, I mean, A and M, South Carolina, uh, South Carolina, but South Carolina is also Ohio getting, State, Arkansas, Arkansas has lost yeah. KJ Jefferson, Rocket Sanders, uh, the Chris. Uh, the linebacker, Paul. Chris, Chris Paul. Paul. Uh, mm-hmm. Is that his name, Chris Paul? It's Chris Paul. Isn't that isn't that funny? Yeah, just what like they the call him Poo. Uh, could uh, could I don't know. I've never called him anything. Call him Poo. I'm gonna I'm gonna call him Chris not Paul. His face. <laughs> um, I'm gonna call him Chris Paul, but I'm sure he's got a killer nickname. But yeah, I'm sure he does. Uh, his his nickname is No, not that one. <laughs> um, yeah, no, not that. Well, maybe CP one. There's ah, a CP3, maybe CP1. That's a good point. Um, Recruiting-wise, mm-hmm. Jordan Seaton is a guy that we've talked about on this podcast a lot, a guy that I yeah. desperately wanted, a number one offensive tackle in the country, IMG Academy, huge mammoth human being, fantastic player. Uh, the, the, obviously, a lot of people thought NIL is going to be heavily involved here, and it probably is. And, again, that's I'm not – I'm not sliding him. This is part of the gig. So when we say money's involved here, people automatically get this dirty feeling. It's not dirty anymore. So quit worrying about that. Um, But uh, so it it came down to, he was going to make his announcement today. For those who don't know, he, everybody thought he was going to, most people thought Tennessee with Alabama having an outside shot. I mean, that's where it seemed. The man commits to Colorado who most people didn't even know were being consider he didn't include colorado on hey i've got a final eight colorado wasn't even on it i mean he just got back from a visit from ohio state and announced that he was going to make his commitment pretty much after that visit so a lot of people thought ohio state at first turns out apparently he didn't have a great visit there um probably because everybody left um (laughs) but um you know i just find this bizarre now does this mean Shadur sanders is going to come back to colorado because I mean, he, un- unless you're he's, just he's already announced. Out. He has announced. Well, his father announced for him. Yeah, yeah. Shadur is gonna. <laughs> Shadur's gonna return. He was his dad was never. I mean, Shadur's the reason Colorado has a chance to win games. So, dad wasn't letting Shadur out the door. Uh, I mean, that's just that's just so interesting. Um, like and good. I mean, if Alabama's not going to get him, I don't want to play against him. At this, I mean, and I, and also, I mean, you would have to think, I mean, there's going to be a pretty good shot. This kid could be in the transfer portal eventually. Um, good. Good. Um, He'll get to play right away. That's for sure. Colorado's offensive line was really bad this past season. Uh, good chance he'll play right away. Of course, you never know. You know, Colorado signed a five star defensive back that Alabama wanted in the last cycle, and uh, it took him a long time to get on the field and play a, a prominent role, uh, even though Colorado has a lower. Uh, talent level than Alabama on the roster, but it took Cormani McLean quite a while to get on the field. Uh, you never really know, but Seton looks has all the looks of a guy who would be ready to play quickly, and Colorado needs the help. 
Uh, I think Alabama was shocked by this, uh, just like Tennessee and Ohio State and Oregon, who thought they had a good chance. Uh, all the big boys were involved here, and uh, and he chose Colorado. And uh, hey, shout out to to Dion who continues to uh, surprise, and uh, and he landed this kid. We'll see if it sticks. There's still two weeks to signing day. I suppose he could end up signing somewhere else, but uh, yeah, this is a little bit of a blow. But hey. You know, one thing to clear up, because I see a lot of comments on our board at BOL, you know, Alabama didn't sign everybody they wanted before NIL. I don't, you know, whenever I see this, people blame NIL. I, I get it, and there's always going to be that, right? There's always, hey, you know, someone outbidded you or someone had more money to offer. You know, that that's, that's true. But this isn't new to Alabama. Alabama signed one of its all-time groups in 2008, for instance. Guess what? Even in 2008, they didn't get everybody they wanted. They didn't get everybody they they, they recruited, uh, not even in the all-time year. Alabama signed just during NIL. Some one of its all-time greatest groups also failed to land some kids that they wanted. Uh, this has always happened, and uh, has Alabama not just survived but thrived? It's okay. They'll, they'll, they'll be just fine. Alabama continues to recruit offensive tackle favor Edwin, from uh, Atlanta that they always going to visit this weekend. He is going to visit this weekend. He has been heavily recruited by Auburn in Florida. Again, here's a long-term development guy, probably a guy you got to develop because he's new to football. Uh, hopefully he doesn't lose patience <laughs> about getting on the field uh, because you got to do some work on this guy, but but the, the end result could be great. Let me tell you another long-term project guy on the offensive line, DJ Fluker. I turned out pretty good. He was ready to go year two. And then uh, I think after year three, he goes pro or so, year four. Uh, you know, uh, this kid might take a hot minute uh, because he's got to learn how to play from the ground up. But the upside, I mean, he, he's got Sunday, day one draft pick type upside. But uh, you got to bring him in, work with him in the weight room, teach him how to play. Um, and then uh, Kiwan Lacey, uh, Andrew yeah. Bone, is pretty much reporting that it's probably going to be Ole Miss, the running back that Alabama has been in on. He has shot up the charts up to like the top 100 uh, for most people. And, uh, of course, there's Kevin Riley that is uh, in Tuscaloosa, but he's committed to University of Miami. It sounds like he's probably going to stick with that. Now, Alabama will keep pursuing him. But, you know, in the end, it makes you wonder – I mean, are we even going to take a running back in this class? I mean, Daniel Hill, Alabama's still flirting with him, and he's still flirting with Alabama, but, man, that just seems like it's never going to happen. Well, there is this one guy, and I stupidly uh, put off to today, I don't know why to watch his film, because this sounds like such sour grapes, but I was blown away by Jaden Bowles' film. He is a running back from Georgia. Uh, he is committed to Arkansas. He is going to visit Alabama, I think, either this weekend or next. Uh, but he will take an official visit, 6'1", 215. This kid has some burst and speed. And I, I'm just being honest when I say I've been a big Daniel Hill fan from the jump, and I've wanted Daniel Hill, along with Kiwan Lacey and others. This kid's like Daniel Hill because he's bigger. I like him way – I like him far better. I do. And, and you know, not every back Arkansas signs has been great but they have had a good history of backs, yep. whether you're talking about Felix Jones and Darren McFadden and even lately Rocket Sanders uh, and others. But uh, this kid, I know this. When I watched his tape, my, my, my serious thing was, I hope he doesn't play for Arkansas. <laughs> I mean, he, he he's good. He must play. He either plays in a low level. I got to do more digging on him because he either plays a low level of football or he's freakishly good because let me tell you, I didn't see a kid on the field that could run with him. DBs with great angles <coughs> could not even come close to catching him in the open field. And he's 6'1", 215. Great home run hitter. This dude hits home runs like Shohei Otani. I mean, uh, I, I, I'm telling you all, it sounds like sour grapes because we lost out on Kawan Lacey, who I wanted very much. But watch Jaden Bow's film before you uh, think he's some sort of backup plan. Go watch his tape. Uh, Jimmy, when we come back, I want to talk a little bit about the Super 7 games that I saw today so far. Uh, we've got one more game to go tonight. Uh, QB Reese will be in it for Ramsey, and I'll have a report on that later. And then I want to talk about an interesting Milro comparison that I thought of. But right now I want to tell you about eBay Motors, passion, drive, and patience. 
What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, you're not burning cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that big old win you know you want. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. So I uh, got to see Super 7 uh, last night. First of all, I didn't go to the one last night, but um, I did see it, and it was um, – it, it, you know, Cam Coleman sort of is as advertised, a uh, very, very good player. Uh, I really wish Al he had, he and Alabama could have worked something out. Um, I don't think he ever really wanted to go to Alabama. So, I mean, you know, it happens, it's whatever it is. Um, but I thought he was uh, very, very good. Uh, sure. Then I thought Isaiah Fongo was also very, very good. Um, really liked him a lot. And, um, Red Let's morning. see who else was out there. Trent Seaborn. I mean, Trent, <laughs> Trent Seaborn. I mean, what are you going to say about that guy? I mean, he's dude. He's he's ridiculous. One of the best ninth grade quarterbacks I've ever seen. Not the best, but one of the best. Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt about it. Um, and then uh, Red Morgan, Red Jimmy. Morgan. I didn't I didn't get to see all the game because, like I said, I was at yeah. this thing for my wife. But I'm curious, did you get to see any of him? And I did. And I watched quite a bit. Uh, Red's good. I mean, he, he's definitely good. They didn't really challenge him a whole lot. I like his versatility, how he moved around, played different spots. Uh, I really like Asaya Fonga. I, I thought he, he he's definitely going to help us. Again, might take a minute. It's a lineman. They, I mean, linemen are rarely show up and be impact day one guys, but but Fonga look, looks good to me. I'll tell you, one of the kids that blew me away was even better than I thought he would be is Anquan Fagans, the, oh, yeah. the ju junior DB from Thompson. I, I was – Super impressed by him. I think he's he's a dude. And of course, Seaborn uh, Central also had a couple of younger players that impressed me. They had a junior receiver who I thought uh, was really good, but they had a sophomore defensive end who who I really like, Tristan Lyles. That that guy's gonna he's gonna be something for sure. Not the tallest guy, you know, he plays outside, but it's sort of limited in terms of his length. Uh, that that might affect him on the recruiting trail, but he also reminded me of Jeremiah Alexander at the same age. I think this is Jeremiah Alexander. So, uh, boy, both those teams are loaded with with dudes. And then today, um, again, is is three A, one A, and five A. QB Reese hadn't played yet, and uh, I will fill you in on him later on. What I think, I mean, I, I like him a lot, and you can hopefully watch the game too on, on public television or listen on uh, AHSA Radio Network, which is where I've been. But I, I want to bring up a guy that was really, really interesting to me, and that's Floyd Bacard. This is a guy that's a junior playing for Mobile Christian. They won their first state championship ever today. They've only been around since like 2006. But in 13 games, he's got like 73 tackles, 10 sacks, 25 tackles for loss. I don't remember exactly his – um his stat line from today, but he just seemed to be everywhere. And he 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 stood out to me, again, 6'3", 270. From Canada originally, we're seeing a lot more of that. But as you mentioned, um, you know, the problem with getting Canadian dudes is you may – they may not be ready to play. You get them ready to play, uh, ready to put them out there next year, and then they're like, well, I'm, I'm going to go somewhere else, you know. And so be it. But um, it was just very intriguing to me. I know he's got an offer from like Boston College and maybe Georgia State. I'm not saying he's going to be a five star. I'm saying he really impressed me today. So I don't know if you've heard of him, but he's good. Oh, I'm uh, very familiar with him, and I, I did. I agree. I watched uh, on TV quite a bit today, and uh, I think I think Bacard is going to be oh, one of the more interesting prospects in the state in the 25 class. Uh, definitely worth watching. I hope he camps at Alabama. Uh, just an interesting kid, and, and let's see how he grows. 6'3", 270. Uh, I think he's going to end up being a 290-pound type player, and uh, uh, at 290, uh, he'll have some really impressive athleticism. He's a slam dunk uh, power five guy to me. I, I just don't know yet that he's Alabama level, but he's a slam dunk power five guy. I also like the center 
at Mobile Christian, Bo Cagle. Uh, yeah, he's a guy. He's going to play somewhere, probably in the SEC. Again, he's a guy that would need to camp at Alabama, most likely, you know, to get an Alabama type offer. But uh, but he, he'll he'll likely be in the SEC. Uh, and, and they have a couple other younger guys, a sophomore DB that plays some running back, Jason Todd. I think you know he's interesting. Uh, probably not the longest kid in the world for a corner, but uh, Mobile Christian's good. Ronnie Cottrell, former Alabama assistant, does one heck of a job. Uh, loading up that Mobile Christian roster. And uh, how did they lose Sterling Dixon before the season started and still wins the state championship in the way in which they won it? Add Sterling Dixon to that team. Goodness gracious. Yeah, they won like 55-28. Montgomery Academy is pretty good. They were up, Mobile Christian up 14 nothing. Montgomery Academy comes back in time. Madison it. Academy. Madison, Madison Catholic. Madison, what did I say? Montgomery Academy? I'm sorry. Yeah, they, Madison they played Academy. Montgomery Catholic plays tomorrow. I think. Yeah, that's right. I'm getting my Montgomery confused. Madison Academy. Yeah. Madison Academy comes back and ties it. And then uh, on the ensuing kickoff, Mobile Christian almost returns it for a touchdown. And from that point, they score right before the half to make it 21-14. And then they score coming out of the half. Um, and it was Katie bar the door. It was see you later. So, um, congratulations to them for winning their first state championship. Congratulations to Leroy for winning the state championship. Uh, just turned that game off just a minute ago. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention to close this out. You know, everybody's been talking about Jalen Milrow in comparisons. People want to bring up uh, Blake Sims a little bit, uh, maybe Jalen Hurts a little bit, but, you know, because of strength. Maybe uh, <coughs> Jalen Sims becomes as a speed and um, then – he, neither one of those guys were the most accurate, but they could be super accurate occasionally. You know, it dawned on me how cool a, a story it would be if Jalen Milrow plays against Texas in Houston. He's from Houston. Okay. Houston's in Texas. It's a rematch. Jalen Milrow was committed to Texas. And it dawned on me who I think Jalen Milrow plays like not to this level yet. Please don't get it twisted. Not to this level yet, Vince Young. That's who we remember. That's his hero. Of. That's literally his hero. Doesn't that does? I mean, I I, I feel I think they're like similar. maybe I I'm stupid. It. Maybe maybe everybody else on earth has thought of that. I have no. not heard anybody else mention no. that comparison. Yeah, it, it, uh, Vince Young was his childhood idol. I mean, I think when he was growing up, he's like, I want to be a quarterback and I want to be Vince Young. Uh, I think Vince Young is a heck of a uh, I, I I like it. I think that's what Jalen Milrow can be next year. You know, I saw a draft projection today, which I had never seen before for Milrow. If he came out now, uh, I saw him as a as a third round pick today, a fourth round this, pick this year. Yeah, yeah. I saw him as if he came out, he would go in the third or fourth round. Uh, and I get that. I, I get. It. I mean, on, in this one projection, which of course is just you know you can't take it as gospel. But I did see a third or fourth round projection for him. He'd make a huge, huge mistake, in my opinion, if he yeah. came out now uh, when he's not ready. But I think he can be with continued improvement of Vince Young type prospect. And we know where Vince went in the draft. Might not have worked out for Vince long term, but we know where he went in the draft. And I think Jalen Milrow can have that type of, of draft ability with another year and further development. But, uh, I, I'm a I'm a huge uh, Milrow upside fan, and hey, let's see what happens in these next two. You know, he's playing on the biggest stage possible against elite defenses. If he gets to play twice, Michigan and probably Texas, two elite defenses. So it's an opportunity for Milrow to move up, even this year. Yeah, it certainly is. All right, well, that's going to do it for today's Locked On Bama. Talk to you guys uh, probably not tomorrow. Um, you know, with no games on Saturday now, it's a little different. But we will talk to you on Sunday. And until then, roll tight, everybody. Roll tight.